it's a piece of metal with an, with a movement in there and some cool colors. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's that's what this is too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think it would be cool. As long as we're reaching out and people really it's just like this our one's content. bad. <laughs> just this one's so much better. This is, you, you go to a club in this one, and the girls flock to you. Trust me, I Trust know. Me. <laughs> they buy you drinks. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Patrick. And I'm Adam. And we're Clock, Stock, and Barrel. <laughs> <laughs> Bam! Coming at you with another video. Actually, yeah. our first video. So this one, <clears throat> this one's really hot right now. This is the super fine Seiko SRP A21, or the Patty Turtle. The Patty Turtle. The Patty Turtle, for anyone else who's into watch lingo. Uh, and it's called the Patty Turtle because it is distinguished by the Professional Association of Dive Instructors logo that's right. on the dial face. But that's not what we're here to talk about. Um, yeah. We're here to discuss what's in that title. And it's the Rolex GMT versus the Patty Turtle. Now I know their arms. Hear that jangle? Yeah, that, that little jangle. So this is a <laughs> this is a Rolex that I just actually got last week. So this is pre ceramic. So there are gonna be a lot of big differences. I want you to keep in mind when we're doing this comparison. Um, when it comes to the case design, the bracelet, the movement, um, of course the bezel, right? Um, but yeah, we thought it'd be kind of fun to put some heavy hitters, you know, elite luxury, as people would call it, yeah. um, Versus, against uh, a, you know, three, four, five hundred dollar turtle. All right, guys, so I know the <laughs> initial impression is there's nothing really in common between these two watches, aside from the fact that they're both Pepsis. However, they're both watches, they both tell time, and they both have rotating bezels. That's right. So that's why we're talking about them. Also, it's the fact that we're looking at a beginning level diver watch as opposed to something that's a higher end luxury piece, like the Rolex. Right. And this is an authentic Rolex as well, guys. Uh, every watch <laughs> here is authentic. Um, we've been through a lot of pieces, uh, but we've settled on these. Now, the Patty is part of my personal collection. Yeah. The Pepsi GMT is and yours. The GMT is the one I just got. So, just for reference, guys, this is the reference 16710 yes. um, it's a U serial so it's a it's a late 90 1997 model um, so there are a couple of differences that we'll kind of talk about um, in terms of solid end links and, and uh, hollow bracelet links and, and the holes case and all that which we'll kind of get into once we uh, go down to the nitty-gritty between uh, between the two of them but I thought it'd be a fun comparison you know an entry-level diver um, I think you can get you can get basic turtles now for yeah. for under three hundred dollars. Um, the Patty's obviously a, I guess you what it's is it called special, special edition, edition not yeah. limited special in this case. Yeah. So, um, but it's well super popular. Over tens of thousands of these made. Who knows? Yeah. Um, they don't really release numbers for these. However, uh, yeah, you can secure a turtle for a whole lot less nowadays than when it just when it first came out. I mean, it yeah. was introduced maybe four hundred, five hundred dollars, but you can get them in the low two hundred if you go to places like eBay or any watch forums. Uh, if there are people watching the show right now, you probably follow some watch forums. Um, but yeah. And a lot less than a Rolex, too. <laughs> um, <laughs> a lot less. No, but, sir. yeah, that's what makes this uh, you know, comparison interesting. Um, so far as our topics of discussion here, we're going to discuss the case. Obviously, the case design and the finish of the case, bezel, bezel action, the materials used in the design, as well as the bracelets individually. Uh, that's to include any components of the bracelets, the buckle, the end links, so on and so forth. And then, of course, the movement. Now, we're not going to get into the nitty gritty of the technical aspects. You guys can find all that information online, unless you're dying to know. Then leave a comment down below and we'll let you know. Uh, that's like the beat rate, um, all that stuff. Yeah. All that stuff. Yeah. Um, but while we begin with case design, I think that's a good way to start. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is a standard sport case, as you guys will see. It's a 40 millimeter uh, GMT. Like I said, this is the 1997 model. Um, it's oyster design. Yeah, yeah it's oyster case. Yeah. You can see the case back here as well. Um, so a couple of things about the GMT. A lot of people, the Rolex Submariner is obviously one of the most popular Rolexes that you'll get out there. And pre-ceramic, the biggest difference here between the Rolex and the GMT, the GMT has a much thinner profile yeah, yeah. that you'll see. So I would say in terms of case design on the wrist, I absolutely love it. It wears so well, it almost kind of, it, it escapes on the wrist. Um, mm -hmm. You can see one of the things that I love is the fact that it has drilled lug holes. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a total strap whore. Yeah. <laughs> I, I put NATOs, I put leather, I put everything I possibly can. 
So it's nice to have the quick access with the lug holes. You just pop a pin in there, but so pull the bracelet turtle. off. Look at that. And there you go. Hey, I'm just, I'm just good gonna, old Seiko. I'm, I'm just gonna get a turtle. Yeah. <laughs> right. So but I think Seiko's ahead right now. Uh, my, yeah. I mean, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see about that. Um, so let's talk about that bezel action. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Don't even stop. laughs> We're just gonna completely skip the bezel. Like, what do we even say about the bezel? Oh like, man, what the, is there to say about the bezel? So guys, uh, I know everyone geeks about vintage Rolex, but one of the qualms yeah. when it comes to vintage pieces is that action begins to deteriorate. So the bezel is a little, it's sort of locked in the place just because of the oil yeah, there. oil and all the gunk. I need to pop off the bezel and clean it up a little bit. Um, it's not moving very freely. As However, you guys know, the GMT has a bi-directional bezel. Maybe you didn't know that, but it does have a bi-directional bezel. Um, and yeah, I can't really turn it that well right now. Once I put it under hot water with a little bit of soap, it starts to turn, but then once it dries out, it's, uh, it's not going anywhere, so <laughs> I keep it as is for now until I, I swing by a Rolex or um, pop off the bezel myself and try and do a little bit of cleaning. But, that might uh, that might be the project, yeah. And I guess uh, crown action, um, the crown is still... Oh yeah, I mean the crown, the crown is phenomenal. Um, you can see, you guys will see on the actual crown itself, there's a line under it. Um, which I believe is, it's the double lock system that Rolex has. and on, Unlike the triple lock crown that's found on the newer Rolexes. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and I mean, the thing too is about the GMT um, crown is it's much smaller than a lot of the other Rolex models. The Submariner has a much, um, much bigger crown. So, I don't know. It's kind of small, but it's kind of nice because it also disappears on the wrist and doesn't, you know, doesn't dig into, dig into you. Yeah. Um, so, you yeah, know. That is, that is a big factor because people talk about the big crowns and like we yeah. have Squale here and this is a, a yeah. 1545 to see you guys now. I know it's not part of the comparison, but the idea that Squale took on was making an enlarged crown like some of the older Rolexes, the big crowns they have. Um, but they begin to dig in the wrist. Unless it's thick yeah. enough, and it, it protrudes enough off the uh, wrist, but then again, you're, you're losing that slim profile. Exactly. So it, sort of, it sort of hurts itself as much as it helps. Yeah. So I would actually, you know, it's kind of funny because before I was like, oh, that crown's kind of small, yeah. but um, in, terms of, in terms of overall design, I, I kind of love it now. And on it, that small crown doesn't, doesn't, you know, lack in quality. No. Quality not feel not. at all, so. Not at all. It's about the same size um, as your Explorer was. Right? Yeah, so I I had a 36 millimeter Explorer before this. I actually traded that towards this piece uh, as well as a couple others. Um, there was a 14 270. It was a 1990 model. Yeah. Uh, also had the holst case and everything. But yeah, the crown was you know there were no crown guards on that, so um, that's probably making this crown look a little bit smaller. But well, let's yeah, get to, let's get to what people are actually here. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Seiko. Good old we, Seiko. We know it's the best brand. Guys, I love Seiko too, we by don't... the way. So. <laughs> we don't need to talk about He's it. He's played devil's stage. advocate here. Uh, oh, hardly. I mean, here's the thing. We're like zero is a zero snobbery zone. If you yep. come to watch our videos, uh, a watch is a watch when it comes to the end of the day. And, uh, you know, if it's on your wrist and it makes you happy, that's the most important part. Um, and that's why I choose Seiko, guys. No, uh, but Seiko, I, I love the fact that they make unique case designs and they do almost everything in house with their movements. Yeah. Um, there's a lot to like about Seiko. So let's begin with the turtle here. Um, yes, it's a Pepsi. Um, this one has a sunburst dial. It's a, as opposed to the black of the Rolex. So there's a little difference in color, um, in color there. Uh, the case design is unique. It's modeled after, I forget the reference number, but there is an older, uh, what is it, 6309? 6309, I believe. Yeah. 6309-something. There's a couple different references. I don't know off the top of my head. So but. this is this is modeled after something that was made in the 70s by Seiko, so it's um, it's a reissue. Uh, the case is a little bit bigger than that original, but for the most part, it's about the same. Uh, one of the only other dissimilar features is the seconds hand. It doesn't match the original, but that's okay. It matches more in line with SKX line, if you guys are familiar with those, uh, which you probably are. Uh, the bezel rotates. Check it out. <laughs> oh, it must feel nice. <laughs> oh, it feels great. Um, the action on it's pretty good. Um, it does sound tinny. It's a thin bezel. That's okay. I didn't spend that much on the watch. Um, it's got a great cut to it, though. Um, yeah. The crown action on mine, that's good. 
it's a little finicky. I, I don't know. I, I, this is my second turtle. Um, I wound up buying this one. I had the uh, 779, I believe, SRP 779, which is the original Pepsi bezel. Mm -hmm. uh, that looked almost exactly like the Rolex color scheme-wise, black dial and so on. You can't so. go, the patty is gorgeous though, man. Oh yeah. You and, can't go wrong with it. And I love, you mentioned how they kind of, you know, switched up some of the hands and everything. Yeah. But I think it's important to like realize it's, you know, it's, this came out in 2016. Like, and it's not just a reissue, it's like the revitalization of the turtle. So they, they threw in True. some modern elements, and I, I love the way... That or just spare SKX parts. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, it's, I mean, that's what it was. It's, it's fantastic though, the case is great, screw on back, 200 meter diver, yeah. so it's got 100 more meters on the Rolex, just one more check in the box. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Like, I totally like it. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, that's, that's something we'll discuss too. Uh, but you know, 100 meters, man, I'm, I'm totally okay with yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, unless you're a serious is. diver, it's not necessary. I guess we can actually talk about that right now, because that's part of the quake, you know, the case qualifications. I mean, I went snorkeling in Bermuda with a 100 meter Rolex, 100 meter, the Explorer is a 100 meter resistance. Yeah. Little, as long as you have that screw down crown, like, I, I always feel safe. Yeah, one of the first things you can talk about when you look at this watch is that cushion case design, that unique cushion case, where it gets its namesake from the turtle. Um, it's interesting because it's 44 millimeters across, so you'd think that's a rather large watch. And I have a seven and a quarter inch wrist, give or take. Yeah, we um, both have the same exact wrist. Same wrist size. And I usually don't like to go above 41 millimeters. Um, I'll say that this wears very, very well. And you know, people talk about it, it's an illusion, but the way it's cut, it feels smaller. And that's only because you'll notice here the body curves down towards the wrist. So yeah, it feels like a 41 millimeter, because you know what? I bet you those dimensions are probably about 41 where it meets the wrist. You know, um, Seiko does that so well. Those, oh, yeah. the, the lugs, they all have all their curves. divers. Grand Seikos are all their divers on the lower end, like, phenomenal. They always, yeah. they always kind of just escape. Even the Sumo, with that huge lug to lug with, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, still, it's still, it's still, it's still it curves right on the wrist, and it's, it's pretty... That's just another, another thing Seiko does, <laughs> another right? Thing Seiko man. does. Yeah, so I think that's a perfect 10. You know what? I think I'm going to trade this in and get myself a patty turtle. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just we, kidding. We've come there. We've come there. <laughs> so, so you guys can tell we're going to use the uh, B-cam here just to give you a little idea of what these dials look like in comparison. Um, so yeah, see, they're both definitely Pepsis. Um, I believe the turtle is just a little bit wider. Um, in diameter, and that's because that huge chapter ring, of course, the Rolex doesn't have one. Um, yeah, uh, what can I say? It's kind of blank. You know what, though? It's okay. <laughs> chapter rings are a bunch of uh, but smoke you can, and mirrors. You can definitely see where Seiko pulls a little bit of its inspiration. Now, people credit Rolex with a whole lot, right. uh, but I will say that there are some design cues on the turtle that are fantastic and, and completely unique to itself, like the sword and shield at 12 o'clock. I absolutely love. They had it on the original turtle. They have it on the reissue. It just looks stellar. Um, but yeah, I mean the, the Rolex, of course, has that classic design. That Cyclops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't mess with a good thing. And they haven't. They haven't for how long now? Yeah, it's uh, 67. Or no, 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 no. Before that, in the 50s, this came out. As you guys know, you guys know the whole history about it. I'm not going to bore you guys with the whole Pan Am pilots and everything like that. Um, but if you don't, we'll leave a link in the description. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. How about that? How yeah, about let's that? Do that. Um, but yeah, guys, those are the dial faces, uh, clearly a little different. Oh, and mine also does date and date. I should mention. Should I mention? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have my, uh, my date is magnified, so, um... Yeah. No, but, so I, I have, um... Yeah. What is that? Is it the 27th? Is that what that says? Um, what was I gonna say? So, uh, this also came, I also have a Coke bezel for this, an authentic Rolex Coke bezel, yes. which is very cool. So this... 16710 came with uh, a Coke bezel, a Pepsi bezel, or just the all black bezel. So I'm just missing the all black. Maybe I'll have the complete set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm kind of cool, right? And then some more. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm kind of cool now, huh? <laughs> All right, guys, so let's discuss bracelets, and we're going to start with the patty this time around. There are a lot of complaints about this watch's bracelet, uh, but let me just start by saying it has solid end lengths. Can you see that? Those are solid. Super solid. And I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Bracelet <laughs> review over. No, it's like, it's like, I guess you would say it's oyster style. Gosh, I hate saying that. It's a very oyster style bracelet, although it's a nice mix of polish and brushed finish. Um, the links themselves are solid. If you like removing links yourself, you're going to have a real fun time removing links on this watch. It's a pain in the arse. Um, but uh, 
you know, what can you do? It reminds me of the Speedmaster bracelet, to be honest. The newer Speedy bracelet. Mm. Now that I'm looking at it, since I just had that Speedy. Newer How Speedy. Long ago, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, with the with the especially with the kind of the polished bits, you know, on the side. Really, really. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, guys. So if you want something that has a Speedmaster aesthetic, on the rest, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you just wear it so the watch face is down, and then everyone will think you just got a Speedy under your. Yeah, your, your list yeah. Under just your swap coat. out the buckle, and you know, for a couple hundred bucks, and no one will ever know. <laughs> Wow, yeah. that's a great how you wear your watch. Um, so the other thing I, I'd like to note is this buckle. It's uh, it's like one of those stamped clasp, I believe is what they call these. Fold um, over clasp, yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's not great, but it does wear comfortably. My only issue with this is, yes, it has a diver's extension. Great. <laughs> For me, not important, but yeah. what, my only issue here is that this little diver extension, for some reason, I've got the magic wrist size, it digs into my wrist while I wear it. That's my only complaint about this bracelet. Not that it rattles, uh, there's, there's hardly a rattle, unless you're shaking, you know, you've got some sort of issue and you're shaking your wrist a lot, then it might rattle. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, it's, a, it's an excellent bracelet and I, that's why I kept it on this bracelet. I, I don't, you know, everyone always talks so much shit about the Seiko bracelets. Yeah. And oh, like, in general. They're just not that bad. They're, yeah. they're like, they're okay. You know, yeah. everyone's, everyone's like, I'm going to toss this bracelet right away. Let me get, let me get a strap code for this. Yeah. And you know, that is great for a strap yeah. code. But, strap, uh, code, strap code bracelets are great. I love, you know, I've had their Oyster, I've tried their Jubilee, and I think I think the Jubilee actually looks great on oh, this. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna throw this out. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like, it's not a reason to, it's not, yeah. it's definitely not a detriment to the watches, like any of yeah. their watches. And obviously some of the Seiko 5s, you can complain about, but in their main line, especially the Prospect lineup, I've never had an issue with one of their bracelets. Yeah, and they're not, comfortable. Not too. Like, they're comfortable. And they, too. they size well. They always have micro adjustments. Like that's more than I can say about a lot of different brands. Yeah. So and we have, I mean, we have a, you know, just as an example to throw this in there, even though it's not part of their view right now. I have a monster here, and I absolutely love this monster bracelet. I yeah. mean. It's so unique, right? It's got a little rattle, but who cares? When it's on the wrist, it's not going to be rattling that much. If it's sized right, you know. Yeah. So if it's sized right, it won't rattle. You know, I don't know. I I'm okay with the clasps and the bracelets on on most of the Seiko models. Not Rolex bracelet. Yeah. Okay. So uh, so <laughs> I want you guys to keep a couple things in mind. So this is a pre ceramic. This is the '90s. This is '90s Rolex where. I mean, I'm sure you guys watch a couple different channels. Everyone complains. I mean, you see the fold over clasp that we have here, right? Mm. It's not. Does it say Rolex? It's not much. Yeah, it says it says Rolex on there. It's stamped in there. Yeah, it's you know, opulence. Not uh, not engraved or Could anything. Could they have added Rolex just anywhere else? <sighs> I mean, I wish they put maybe it on the all, side maybe all, all like, yeah, yeah, on every single. Maybe there's just like an R on every single. Or no, the crown, the Rolex crown. I know a guy. That would be. Like I said, this is '90s, right? So this is. A pre ceramic model. This is pre solid end links, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, it is rattly. Yes, when you're holding it in your hands, it might feel kind of cheap mm -hmm. and kind of tinfoil y, you know? But I must say that on the wrist, it's a whole nother ballgame. So, you know, I was wearing a I was wearing a Speedmaster, one of the newer Speedmasters right before I came home and got this in the mail. And I picked this this thing up and I was like, oh man, like this is this is the Ro this is a Rolex bracelet? Like this is kind of yeah, uh, yeah, you know, it's like <laughs> there's so impression. much there's so much play. Yeah. But you know, all that changed when I had it on the wrist for a couple days. Because the thing about this the thing about these old bracelets So oh, those are screw and links. Yeah, they're yes. they're screw and links. Oh so you got something, you got something. You yeah. Know? So the screw down links are great, right? It's it makes it so easy to size, and then you have the micro adjustments here, which there are quite a few, which makes it pretty nice. Yeah, they're pretty wide adjustments too, I like that. Yeah, um, so after wearing this for a couple of days, the thing is, it just, it disappears on the wrist, right? You snap it right in place. I, one of the things that I love the most about the, the vintage Rolexes is, is the extreme taper, mm -hmm. right? And I think, I think that kind of contributes a little bit to the fact that it just kind of, it's gone, you know? Like I've fallen asleep with this, not even realizing that it's on my wrist. Um, sometimes I'll, when I'm walking down the street, I'm just kind of walking, because I'm so used to having these heavy, heavy bracelets, I kind of have to check, check my wrist, you know? Just so, it's yeah, is, it, is it still there, you know? Because it, it's, it becomes a part of you. So I think this is great for kind of, a, you know, an everyday driver. You know, it's it's it becomes a part of you. You don't even realize it's there, as opposed to some of these other, you know, bigger pieces oh, that you, some some people might like. You know, it's there. <laughs> Everyone. You knows. know, it's there. You know, and I mean, it's 
Mm. Some people want that. Some people want a really hefty Ooh, bracelet. Why did you put this down? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. My wrist. I know. That, how much do the br- turtles weigh? I think they weigh like something like 180 grams or something. They have to be at least. So they're they're more on the heavy side. Um, Definitely. So you know it's there. It's all you know. Steel. You always know it's there. 16 L steel. 316, baby. <laughs> yeah, and I, this doesn't even have 90. Oh God, see. <laughs> the 90s, man. I don't even think this has the 904L steel yet from Rolex. I'm not sure when they started employing that, but, um, but yeah, that's you know, it's it's rattly, it's jangly, it's got so, you know hollow end links, um, but I love it. Uh, you know, it's part of that vintage Rolex charm. And I have a good friend of mine. He has um, a 16710 as well. It's a couple years later. Mm-hmm. Um, it still has the holes case but it has uh, solid end links, and I will say that makes a big, big difference when you're just holding it in your hand, kind of jangling it around, um, as, to, as, we as do. to how it feels. As Rolex know. owners do. Yeah, as Rolex <laughs> owners do. Um, yeah, and I guess one of the other things too to note um, in this shot, you can see right here that um, because of the hollow end links, they're kind of recessed Hmm. in between the case so you can kind of see there's a little bit of a drop off so um, the solid end links that came a little bit later um, and those are accurate are a little, bit, are a little bit more flush right at, yeah. you know on the thing but you know it kind of gives a little bit more of that vintage charm it gives a little bit too. more dimension too you know which yeah is nice. yeah so if you're in the market guys yeah uh don't worry this is a good bracelet <laughs> yeah no but yeah i mean it's it's Rolex, right? So you're not paying just for the quality, especially with these vintage pieces. I mean, you look at some of these older watches, like the 1016 Explorer that was like five thousand yeah. dollars a few years ago. These those things are creeping up eight, nine, ten thousand dollars now. Yeah, you know. But you guys, you know, you you all know what you're getting into if you're looking at Rolex. So that's not a huge complaint. Um, what we're trying to show you is there's not, especially when you're when you're comparing some of these some of these you know pre ceramic older Rolexes. Mm-hmm. Um, it, there's really not that big of a difference in quality when you're comparing just the steel and the bracelets itself. Talking about the movement, you know, the GMT function, that's a whole other ballgame. Like, yeah. Rolexes are bulletproof, right? People have had them, people in the military have used subs and GMTs for, for decades, right? But when you're kind of just looking at from, you know, if, if you were to blindfold someone and hand them these bracelets, yeah. Someone, you know, a like, consumer perspective. Yeah, you're really good with the Seiko Turtle. I mean, if yeah. you're trying to get a Pepsi and you like the case dimensions, you're probably going to be square with the Turtle, despite whether it's the patty or, or not. I will say though, keep in mind that this is a mid '90s Explorer. Yeah. Or uh, GMT. Sorry. When you come, when you get these newer Rolexes, especially into the 2000s, with the solid end links. Um, and the hollow, these, these also have hollow center links, you know, everything's nice and solid on the newer ones, it feels much more quality, as well as the class. Now they have, the sub has the glide lock now, which is like incredible, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, that's another argument is that this is, we're comparing a, what I like to call new vintage, you know, 90s Rolex to a modern turtle reissue. So mm-hmm. keep that in mind too, if, you were, if you're looking for something that really feels much more quality, um, maybe doesn't have as much charm as some of the vintage ones, then you yeah, might be better. But that does for. speak a lot to the demand of the consumer because you've seen, you saw that transition happen so quickly. Because when Rolex, for the longest time, they were doing you know the hollow end link bracelets, hollow center links, and uh, they weren't, from a standards perspective, they weren't up to snuff with what you can find modern just from their lineup as well as, I guess, their primary competitor in that same price range, which would be Omega, would have been Omega yeah, back yeah. then. Um, because Omega had better bracelets in the 90s. Yeah, the Seamaster, the Bond. Yeah. We both, that you, you still have, I owned one. Yeah. Um, I mean, that class was leaps and bounds better than this. Yeah, but they picked but, that up you know, fast. You know, it's, it's yeah. interesting watching them grow as a brand. Um, but Seiko's always been it right. Absolutely. What can I say? All right, guys, so we won't get into the movements because, as you know, it's apples and oranges. One's a GMT and one is just... Uh, and the Rolex is just way better. Four you know. Um, I, I mean, will say the 4R36, though, is a phenomenal movement. Oh, yeah. I mean, everyone's talking about, like, ETA 2824s, and, the you know, they're found in, what, the Black Bay has a, a 2824, right? And it's, yeah. The 4R36, I mean, 40 hours power reserve, you have, you have hacking, uh, you have manual wind. I mean... What else do you need? They're, they're relatively it's, accurate too. My my the four R thirty six in my in my SRP three hundred seven J. You guys will probably see in a later video. Um, 
is is like within two seconds a day. Yeah. You know, so I that's mean, pretty insane. For yeah. something that's not chronometer certified. Exactly. Um, I mean, out of the box, that's that's actually really good. Mine's uh, about three seconds slow, unfortunately, yeah. but that's that's what's easy three seconds. Place. You know, that's what's three seconds. You can't you can't complain about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm using my cell phone half the time. Yeah, right. <laughs> I actually, I actually don't even set time on my watch. You know, I just yeah, use my cell phone. Either time zone. Yeah. Um, we're gonna give you a, a wrist shot. Yeah, we'll give you guys a quick wrist shot. Um, so my wrist is just under seven and a quarter. So you guys can kind of see what a forty millimeter, you know, Rolex looks like. I don't. I think the lug to lug on this is something like forty six. Yeah. Um, Maybe some change. So, yeah. So you guys can kind of see. At an angle, how that looks, and I'll go ahead and throw in the patty as well. And yeah, give you an idea what that looks like. Yeah. Uh, the patty is obviously a little bit larger, but again, it's gonna—he's gonna know the feeling <laughs> of it being oh, a little man. bit smaller. Oh wow, that God. That class. Yeah. So here's here's the patty. Whoa! What is that, sir? <laughs> is that a Rolex you're wearing? <laughs> it's a GMT, actually. Yeah. Can you tell? It's a Seiko on it. No, it's Whoa. it's a Rolex. Trust me. <laughs> We can yeah. we can rig that bezel. We'll switch the bezel out with the GMT. Yeah, bezel. exactly. There you go. I do like this though. I've had two turtles in the past. Yeah. I've had I've had three. I had a patty before, and I don't know. I flipped that. The so Zimbe. Fast. The I had the Zimbe. I had the Zimbe, which was very cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I had uh, SRP seven seven five, which was the gold, the golden, uh, the black with the gold accents, mm-hmm. which was which was nice. But I, I like the monster more, so you know. <laughs> that's like my that's my go-to rule yeah, for Seiko. Cool. All right, guys. So that's a brief comparison. Obviously, um, this isn't. Uh, I hope we didn't mislead you into believing that this was supposed to help you decide on which one to buy. Um, clearly, Adam's found his favorite. <laughs> um, but again, it's, it's apples and oranges, just like those movements, guys. If you're gonna if you're gonna come down to buying a Pepsi watch, if you can afford the Rolex, you know what? There's a lot of history there, and it's it's only ever gonna increase in value. So exactly. It's like it's so far as investments are concerned, I think the Rolex is a good one. It's a really good one. Um, if you want something that you can wear and enjoy daily without any sort of concern. These Seiko patties are phenomenal. You can still pick them up now. That's, yeah. I mean, brand new. Um, at a really great rate with an amazing bracelet. Yep. Um, so, hell, guys, I say do that too. Um, yeah. Is it worth it? I think so. I'm not going to lose money on it. I'll probably make money, especially with, you know, the vintage market in Rolex is absolutely ridiculous. The vintage market in general right now is Anything over 25 years old is just, you yeah. know? So, this is not too far off from probably shooting up pretty soon so mm-hmm. you know is it worth it yeah you get your money back so why not right so guys out there that are on the lower end of the market if you're concerned about your watch not being up to snuff don't be um yeah. you know what like and, and this is just one example but guys there's a lot of great watch brands out there that sell watches in this price range that have a lot of the same specs as this patty uh, we're only covering this one because it's, it's one of my new favorites and it's actually a hot topic right now yeah um but you know look forward to more videos of similar content if you enjoyed this feel free to hit that like button if you didn't like it hit that dislike button you know it's all the same <laughs> i understand i dislike things too um guys if you want to see more content like this feel free to hit the subscribe button uh, any, any thoughts anything you want to share with us? no i think i think that covers everything i mean i love i love the seiko i love the rolex you know so yeah. guys we'll keep bringing weird Kind of quirky reviews like this to you guys. Yeah, with, catch, catch us next with, time. Yeah, <laughs> Rolex versus uh, be on the watch. Seiko. For a- <laughs> <laughs> but clear, if you needed a winner, Seiko. Rolex.